How do you make black bean hummus even better? You add a lot of mushrooms. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I am Brian and Jessica is currently behind the camera. Uh, yes, we decided that since this is our first video in this kitchen where we're actually doing a recipe, we should do something that mirrors the first recipe that we did in our previous kitchen, which was hummus, specifically our super smoky hummus, which is an absolute favorite of ours. And I know a lot of you guys out there have made it and love it too. But this one is a black bean hummus that uh, I worked on the recipe for a good little while trying to figure out how to actually get it together and make it super tasty. And the way that I found out by doing that was by adding a lot of mushrooms to this recipe. So let me show you actually what is in this recipe. All right, to make black bean hummus, you will of course need black beans. This is no salt added black beans. You will need one can and you will need to keep the aquafaba, the black liquid that is inside of this can. Also, you will need 12 ounces of mushrooms. You can really use any kind of mushroom that you like. Uh, just sort of chop them up into nice size little pieces like that. 12 ounces of mushrooms. Whatever kind of mushroom you like, you wanna go for some super high-end kind of stuff, go ahead and uh, whatever you prefer as far as flavor is concerned, but do chop them up into smaller pieces if they are big. If they're small, then you know keep them that size, but you don't wanna keep them whole because the more surface area they have, the more liquid they're going to release later on, which is a key part of this recipe. Also, you will need one small, medium-ish, uh, chopped onion, kind of like that. You know, that kind of fits into there. Uh, but yeah, chop it up. You don't have to be super precise about it. Just make sure that they are all sort of nicely chopped up like that. You don't have to be super fine about it. You will also need one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. You can also use uh, uh, tamari. You can use uh, uh, liquid aminos. Liquid aminos. Like there's, there's uh, options that you have, but you will need one tablespoon of this kind of stuff. You will also need two tablespoons of tahini. Now, this is the organic tahini from Trader Joe's. It is literally nothing but sesame seeds. Says so right there, just sesame seeds in the ingredient. Don't get anything that has any added oil or anything of the sort. I know some of the other brands out there definitely have oil added to them. Don't get those, you just want the straightforward sesame seeds. For seasonings, you will need one teaspoon of garlic powder, very key, one half teaspoon of cumin, and a dash of cayenne pepper. Now, let's get to cooking. Before we get to that, Jessica wanted me to tell you, you can go to our website, crocsinthekitchen.com to find this recipe and all the ingredient amounts. All right, now let's get to cooking. First things first, we will need to cook the onions and mushrooms. And to do so, we will be using my new favorite pan. It is a stainless steel five and a half quart pan. It is very deep on the side, so it holds a lot of good stuff. As you guys know, we cook a lot of things in giant bulks. And so it's really nice to have a giant pan to cook in. But this thing has a very thick base, so it heats up very nicely. It cooks things extremely well, and it has a nice lid to go on top. If you would like to buy something similar to this, as this one is currently unavailable, you can go to our Amazon link, which is in the description below. So on this lovely gas range that I now have, I have this pan set to medium high. Our scale goes to six, this one's set to four, but you want it really good and hot here, but not scorching hot because you want this effect. This is the Liedenfrost effect. And if you see the water slides completely all around there like it is a nonstick surface. And guess what? Vegetables tend to actually act in the exact same way. They release their moisture and they don't really stick to the pan all that much. Now, if they do start to stick, you can always add in a splash of water and you can just water saute these. But for the most part, I'm not actually gonna do that here because I want these to get a nice, lovely color to them. So once they're in the pan, go ahead and just keep stirring them around, shaking them, doing whatever you wanna do. But you just want them to take on a little bit of color. 
Now your pan may differ, but I know that these are perfect when there starts to be a little bit of a layer of stuff that starts to stick to the pan. And that's when you want to actually throw in your mushrooms. Once your mushrooms are in there, just keep them moving around until they start to heat up and release their liquid. You will actually be able to tell when they're releasing their liquid because the sound of the sizzle actually diminishes. But the ultimate goal of this is to cook out as much liquid as possible from the mushrooms. So once you've got the liquid cooked out, you will start to see that a layer of stuff once again starts to stick to the bottom of the pan. That's when you add in your tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce and turn the heat off immediately and deglaze the pan. Once the pan is deglazed, set it aside and let it cool. Now, after you've had that cooling over to the side for just a bit, it is time to add everything else into the blender. So that includes the whole can of black beans. You don't need to rinse these, just throw them in, but you do wanna keep the liquid separate because you may need a little bit more or less depending on how your uh, blender mixes things up. Then add in all of the mushrooms and the onions. And of course we are adding in a half cup of the aquafaba, which was actually all the liquid that was in that can. Now it's time to add the tahini. Jessica loves to weigh this out so you don't have to scoop things out. It's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to uh, manage. And of course she just weighs it out into the container itself. Once you've got the tahini in, we can then add in our seasonings, which is of course garlic powder, cumin, and cayenne pepper. Now put on the lid and blend until it is smooth and creamy. If you have a little bit of trouble blending this together, you can add in some more of the aquafaba that came in the can if you have extra. If you don't, you can just add in a little bit of water at a time until it reaches a nice smooth consistency. Now look at that. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? It'd be a real shame if a bubble popped and made it just fall right down. This is all just for a little bit of show, but you can add a bit of your favorite no salt seasoning on top or some everything but the bagel seasoning. And then you are ready to go to town with whatever it is that you are going to dip into this absolutely delicious black bean and mushroom hummus. So there you have it. You know, adding mushrooms was my idea. You take all the credit for all the recipes, but I helped you with this one. That you did. <laughs> now he gives me credit. Earlier he's like, really, was it, was it? <laughs> I was giving her trouble, as married people do. <laughs> so now we have some lovely black bean hummus. Yeah, it's black bean and mushroom hummus. Yes. I, I love this stuff, like I can't help it. Every single time that we make it, I'm just like, man, that is just so tasty and so nice. It's got such a strong umami flavor to it and just really, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. You And you can mess with it all you like. If you want to add different kinds of mushrooms, that works. If you want to do all- Am I allowed to double dip? I don't see why. I mean, if you notice there's a dog in the background. <laughs> don't mind that. <laughs> forget him. He's just wandering around. It's just so good and creamy. Just a top-notch hummus. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Even great with carrots. Mm -hmm. I like it because... Mm, 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 because? Because, like, the first time I ever had hummus, it was actually at a tapas, not topless, tapas <laughs> restaurant. want to clarify that there. And we had a trio de hummus. Yes. And I don't know if I said that right. 
Yeah, I'm just great. Uh, but it was like a black bean hummus, a regular hummus, and like a red pepper hummus or something yes. like that. And so I just thought, I don't know, I just like the fact that now we have a black bean hummus in our repertoire. And all we need to do <laughs> is come up with a red pepper hummus. Yeah, actually we have another hummus recipe that we've been working on that we will be releasing sometime in the future. But we just thought this would be a fun one to release as the first one in this kitchen, Brian's parents' kitchen. Uh, yeah, so anything else you got? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. Once again, you can find the recipe and all the ingredient amounts on our website, crockedinthekitchen.com. But subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already and click the bell that is right next to it so you get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, find us on social media, mainly Facebook and Instagram. You can message us on there. You can see all the stuff that we post. It is absolutely fantastic, and I do recommend that you do that. Also, you can give the video a nice little like and uh, share it out with your friends if you so choose. If you wanna be like, hey, I found this amazing hummus recipe, here you go. <laughs> that works too, but I think that's all I got. That's definitely all I got. That's definitely all Ollie has. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.